Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle show with a disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. What do you get when you combine the concepts of love, life change, and wheelchair ballroom dancing? You get a poignant film called Musical Chairs. I was lucky enough to be invited to a private screening of Musical Chairs and very lucky to meet the producer, Janet Karras. Today, we're gonna to be speaking with her about the inspiration behind this film and uh, where you can see it in a theater near you or at the convenience of your own home. So please open your mind and your hearts to Janet Karras. Hi, Janet, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, and thank you for the invitation. This is very exciting. Yes, I'm very excited. I know um, people, there's not a lot of film and media uh, around disability or even involving people with disabilities, including cast members in their films. So I was very excited to hear that there are people out there looking to, to bring the disability issues and disability people as actors into, into the mainstream media. So thank you for everything you're doing on your part. It is, it's, it does make a difference. So first of all, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's good to hear and it's good to know because um, that was in fact the whole intention of mine was not, it wasn't a, um, a it wasn't planned to be commercial, you know, like a, I should live, be so lucky, like a Star Wars or something like that. It really had an intention of making a difference. And, um, and you know, the response from, from people that have seen it, I feel like I've already accomplished, you know, what I set out to do. And it's going to take a grassroots approach because, you know, like you know, and most people that are dealing with um, differences, you know, no matter what your difference is, is from the norm of the whole of society, you know, you're kind of up against it in some shape or form. And it's like enough already. It's, yeah. It's, you know. So I'd like to um, find out from your perspective, what was the inspiration behind this film? Well, um, it's, it goes back uh, to about 2000. And we were, my, my late husband and I were involved with this uh, Center for Discovery, which is a, a residential care facility in Harris, New York. And w the way we found or got involved there was at one point, Jerry had, um, had been diagnosed with cancer. And the doctor that, the surgeon that operated on him and and eventually became a very dear friend um we found out after years of saying what could we do you were so wonderful blah 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 you know he would drive he had to drive home kind of past our house to get to his house and he used to make house calls because jerry had such complications so we became really good friends so to find out after a few years that um Dr. Todd had a son in the Center for Discovery mm -hmm. and that he was just uh, placed there at 19 because they no longer could care for him at home. And George had asked, would you please, um, how about just taking a ride up? You wanted to do something. I just would like you to see this. We were so taken aback from the quality of care and philosophy you did not know you were going to residential care. You thought you were going to a, like a condominium setup or something. It was up in the country. It was just wonderful. Uh, and then after Jerry passed away, they made a donation because it was, they just weren't, um, you know, they just weren't being recognized for the work that they're doing. And I, it's been a very uh learning curve and an education on how funding happens and health care and who gets what and and which you know unfortunately all boils down to politics and stuff so I made a donation and because of what I did it made the National Institute for Health pay attention to what they're doing and then their funding started and on and on. So that was nice and they wanted to in 2004 because of this they wanted to honor me. Well let me tell you I know you've gone to these 
fundraising things. And this, this poor soul gets up to say how thankful and everybody's eating and drinking and nobody's paying attention. Well, that wasn't going to happen on my end. So I said, and I, and I really mean this from, I don't know where the idea came from. I had no, I, I don't even know where. All I know is it had to be the universe interfering or destiny or whatever you want to call it. So they sa- I said, well, I don't know. I'm not going to be honored and get up there and nobody pay attention to me because I'm not going to do that. I said, so if you want me, you have to do something different. And they said, well, what would that be? And at the clear blue sky, I said, I think you should show what your facility is all about. And you need to do it with a performance of some sort with a resident from the center and and showcase it so that the people that are going there for the dinner, for the dancing, for the alcohol, for the whole nine yards, actually sees it and not just as something, oh, this, this is a nice night out, we get dressed, we're at Chelsea Pier right on the Hudson River, yada, yada, yada. So, um, of course, the uh, Patrick Dollard, who is the CEO there, he got a little pale because, I mean, he knows me a little well, and... Um, and he couldn't figure out what the heck was coming down the pike. So I said, well, I think you should do a wheelchair dance showcase. And he says, well, how are we going to, how's that happening? And I happened to have been with someone that night that was a professional dancer. I said, oh, he'll do it. <laughs> and so, so he looks at me. He says, what do you mean I'll do it? I said, yeah, you could just get a resident. You practice. The night of the um of the gala, you go out, you do a minute and a half, two minutes, and boom. Mm-hmm. Well, one thing led to another. He said, "I'll only do it if you do it." At that point, I was I had I was not a dancer, mm-hmm. and um and so I said, "Oh, oh. yeah." And then somebody else at the table said, "Well." If you guys are going to do it, I want to do it. Long story short, we had four a body and four residents from the center. We practiced. We went. I went to Amsterdam to take a workshop on wheelchair dancing with with the professional dancer, and um, came back. We practiced for three months. We made the dresses, the gowns, the whole nine yards. The night of the gala, um, you could hear a pin drop. And the best part is that there's a gentleman that would go every year and every night he would, every year he would give Patrick a check for $10,000. That night he gave a check for $100,000. He was so, every, and they're still talking about it. And if you go to the website, you could even probably get a little something from it. So I was so impressed with the impact that it had on a room of 600 people. That I thought, wow, you know, this is really something. And then I just started daydreaming about it and thinking I had seen the movie Shall We Dance? And then I thought, well, what if you just took it one step further and it was a dancer who had an accident? And then, you know, the the, the power of love and music and how you're forced to reinvent yourself as life goes on. We all have to reinvent it. I mean, I think I'm in my seventh or eighth reinvention of myself and kind of up against a wall right now. But I figured, eh, I'll get through this too. So everybody has to deal with something in some shape or form, uh, some sort of trauma or, or a situation that changes their life from one day to the next. Somebody loses a job somebody's, you know, a mega fund goes belly up. I mean, a husband comes home and says, guess what, sweetheart? Um, you know, you're too old. I'm, I found somebody else and she's got, you know, so everybody, whether it's birth, uh, accidents, you know, whatever. Mm. So that's what I wanted to show that, that the power of the human spirit, the power of Trust, believing that, you know, you can, 
you're not you're not what you are. You know, you're more than that. You're more than than a, a pretty face or a bank account or any of that. And and it's those moments in life that you need to try and figure out how to, you know, rise from the ashes and not to be so melodramatic, but it's like that for a lot of people in a lot of situations. So how would be the best thing to show it without the schmaltzy, without, you know, placating or, you know, making it ridiculous and keeping it true and keeping... Um, the people, the 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 uh, what I wanted to represent, the diversity in life, the gender issues, the disabilities. I know for myself, even being in the situation at the around the center and around in that environment, there was always a, and I'm not proud to say this, um, always kind of an uncomfortable feeling of some sort when when having uh, to be um, involved or or even walking down the street how many times you walk down the street and you pass someone in a, in a wheelchair or you or, or somebody with clearly some sort of a disability and you kind of like you know try to just keep a normal face and follow through but but you have this feeling inside and I thought I don't like this I am. I would like to think I'm fairly intelligent. I would like to think that, you know, I have a healthier outlook on life and people and and places and things. And yet, this uncontrollable or this knee-jerk reaction. And I thought, well, this is, well, this sucks, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't like this. I don't like this about myself. Now, if I'm thinking about this and I have you know, so much intelligence. What about the people that just act it out and don't even think like, well, wait a minute, you know, this is another person. This is another human being. This is a situation that is not who they are, Mm -hmm. you know, and to switch the, the, um, perception that there's the disability and there's a person attached to it instead of this is a person mm-hmm. and then whatever whether you're gay whether you're disabled whether you're old whether you're ugly whatever you know first you're a person yes. take away that shell and we're all the same uh, as much as so many things on this planet try to tell us differently i think we are i would my hope is that we're all evolving to another place where that old stuff is not flying anymore. Yes. And we've gone through it. We've gone through it. 1929, I wouldn't have been, you, we would not have been able to vote, right? Right. I mean, just just everything from women to, to people of color. So I think the disability issue and the gender are like our last frontiers. Mm-hmm. And um, and you know, just stop it. Just yeah. and that's what I wanted to do. And how else to do it by just showing real people having some of the dialogue, which I must say that um, Susan Seidelman and I and Joey Didio, who worked on this with me, and the writer Marty Madden, you know, some of the language, some of the references. But we had to do something like that because otherwise you wouldn't be watching little snippets of the real world or the attitudes that eventually towards the end of the film, I hope, dis- disappeared or at least dissolved somewhat and had a different, and, and you could see the characters evolve into more accepting and more, um, you know, more human. Yes. And I think you did a brilliant job of that. Uh, you know, just looking back on the film, there's so many layers to the film as a whole, but then each character has its own layers of mm-hmm. um, discovering even themselves. Um, I know not only did you visit the disability, but within the disability, you have the transgender um, mm-hmm. issue come up and and how does someone, you know, deal with that with love and interacting and dating. And, and that was... I just thought the film 
really, you know, it, with disability, it's hard because we do have the disability part to us. Yes. And whether we like it or not, it does form a little bit of our identity. Mm-hmm. But oftentimes, if I, even for myself, I say, okay, well, that's just, I'm, I'm not my disability. I am a person with a disability. Like you were saying, it's person centered first. Um, and I think the film did a great job of having the disability issue there, but the film wasn't the disability. It wasn't about disability. It right. really was about the universal language of love and the human spirit and how each person has to go on their journey themselves. Because I, and thank you for your honesty of, of your discomfort uh, around people with disabilities. And, and I'm sure you're, you're expressing and there are people watching this right now. They're probably like, yeah, I feel the exact same way. And, but most people don't take it to the next level of saying, okay, well then why do I feel this discomfort? How do I get past it? So I can see the person as a person first. Um, And I, I think, um, I think your film does a great job of helping people see them as people first. The disability is there, but it's not, it's not the film. It really isn't. Um, oh. And I really appreciate you using casting members who are actually disabled. Um, do you want to speak about that a little bit? Because there are tons of people that do movies about disability, but they don't actually use people with disabilities. And that clearly was the intent on my part from the very beginning, was that whatever whatever um, diversity we were showing, we were going to show as real a deal as possible. And, uh, and we did put a call out and have people come to audition. And, um, and the fact, and I think that one of the more difficult parts of that casting was the fact that we really needed people that were going to be able to dance or at least, you know, again, it is a movie. It's not a documentary. It would have been a whole different animal if it was a documentary. But I would not have been able to have had the the luxury of the story and the music and and all of that um, without it being a you know a story story a narrative and and so in the very beginning when we first started screening it there was a particular person who after a long uh, a couple of conversations with her to find out she didn't even see the movie and she was critiquing it. But that's neither here nor there. So at one of these screenings, you know, they said, well, why wasn't there all, you know, disabled dancers? Now, it was impossible to make an entertaining movie realistic if... I had somebody in power chair. You couldn't do it with the. You couldn't do the dancing in the power chair. Right. You had to. So there right. was a compromise. But we ha- and we found, luckily for us, out of the six dancers, three were truly disabled dancers. I thought that was a pretty fair thing. Then the whole of the um, basketball team, except for the main character Kenny, everybody else was legitimate. And of course, that was not computer generated. Um, uh, Anita Hollander, who played um, Anita in the in the film with the one leg, that was not co- that's her. That's mm-hmm. her in all her glory. And uh, and then um, Laverne Cox, who is a true transgendered actress. So everything, and I and I and in my explanation, when when some of these, you know criticisms would come up because I realize that also the pop how how intense this is for people of this dis, that are disabled not wanting to be minimized or you know um, ignored or anything like that but it it was an audition and so I said how many of you guys have seen American Idol how many people do you watch when we watch the, 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 you know, auditions? Everybody thinks they can sing. Right. They can sing, you know? I mean, and it was like that for us. There were some people that, oh, my God, you know, there was nothing. There was, I mean, 
it wouldn't work. And it wouldn't work for the intention. And again, it was just me. This has only been my project. It hasn't. And the, the upside of that is I have not had to listen to anybody saying, well, where's my money? How come, you know, you're not, I don't have to deal with that. So I did it my way. Um, I think I have, with the help of all the people involved, Susan and Joey and Marty and all the people behind, at, in front of this camera and behind, that it's something that I can be, we all can be proud of because um, nobody was portrayed less than. Right. And, and to the, you know, to the point where people with disabilities don't want to be minimized or ignored, giving them an equal and fair shot to, to audition is, is right. Giving somebody a part just because they're disabled is not right. That would be minimizing them. Um, and that's the, it's the kind of defeating the whole purpose of acceptance, right? You know, you're accepted for what you do with what you have and not, oh, you poor thing. Let me give you something. Right. You right. know, right. And you want, you, you know, with the, this film, I think you did put your best foot forward. Um, and I think everyone that can wa will watch this film will be touched. I mean, at the end of the movie, I was bawling. <laughs> it was terrible. I'm like, I didn't know I needed Kleenex. This is wheelchair ballroom dancing. But it was just so inspiring because of, of the storyline itself, the love that is so apparent. Um, and I'm, I'm very blessed to be married. And, and yes. he's, a, he's a lovely man. Um, and so just being able to see two people... Like as you say, the as spirits interact mm -hmm. and completely and unconditionally love each other, it, it's moving, and I think that's something we all crave. Yes. So if there was one thing, millions and millions of people, and maybe not not have not have not yet, but will watch this film. What would be the one thing you hope that they would take away from this film? I would hope that they would whatever ideas preconceived attitudes and and um prejudices that uh somehow the diversity in the film is whoever it whoever it is whether it's gender whether it's a disability even the cultural with the latino um that that kind of dissipates somewhat i mean we cannot afford to isolate and make groups of people less than because we're not going to make it i mean as we can as we all can see i mean we look around and it's it's really awful and if it changes somebody's attitude towards gender towards um the power of just being loved for who you are and not for what you look like or what you're lacking and if it can just change somebody's attitude so that they can pass it down just to one other person, their child, their sister, their brother, their husband, whatever. I think, I think the ripple effect will have an amazing um, outcome because it, it has to. It, 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 we just cannot stay in that this um, Neanderthal, and no offense against the poor Neanderthals, but, but that, that, that the, the way of thinking mm. and separating we, you know, and if somebody can, if it changes somebody, and, oh my God, I've got this issue, whatever this so-called issue is, and I just now have to realize this is who I am and find my best life and find the way I can make a contribution to, the, to myself, to my family, to whoever in a positive way. You know, and that's and if I and if and if I, and if that could be accomplished, I think that's a pretty good thing. Yeah, I'm very pleased at that, and um, and I am very pleased every time I screen this that I actually hear from people how real it was, and I and I do know that there's you know you read some of the reviews and stuff and you know whatever depending on who's viewing it. But yeah. overall, overall, it's it's been it's a nice feeling. Yes, it is. And you know what? <clears throat> I think anytime, anytime we do some, try to do something great, 
to impact the world, we're going to get some static back. And I know you've had some challenges in getting the film um, mm -hmm. in mainstream, um, in, in to the mainstream. So um, <clears throat> what challenges have there been and what, you know, like you said earlier, this is a grassroots effort. What could each of us do to help make sure that this film is viewed? HBO is interested. So as soon, and I should know by the end of the week. And if that's the case, then the best thing, uh, the best help I can get uh, anybody that is interested in wanting to see this or um, is to let us know on our Facebook and and then I will I have once I get the details on how you know you can find out where to how to see it or or maybe if everybody just whoever wants to see it would go to I don't know HBO and say hello I want this movie <laughs> you know, right something like that and I am also um, uh, just finishing up DVDs. So I'm making DVD with, I, I, this is very ambitious because I do believe somehow or another it's going to happen. I had it, the DVD subtitled in Spanish, French, Chinese, and closed caption. Awesome. And, um, and this way, and all that information will go out on, our, on the Musical Chairs website when and then all I need is whoever wants to know, where can I see this film or how do I get this? You yes. know, to just make a lot of noise. That's okay. It. So if people wanted to um, learn more about musical chairs and in the near future purchase the DVD, it's, what's the website? The um, website, musicalchairsthefilm.com. And then we have on Facebook... We have, it's Facebook.com, Musical Chairs, the movie. Okay. So there's two things. Facebook is the movie, and the website is MusicalChairsTheFilm.com. You know, I, I just want to, again, it's, you're not disabled. Um, and so no. for you to take an interest in making a difference, and it really does cross beyond disability. Disability is the, almost the, the change factor or the impetus for the movie but mm -hmm. really anyone that's watching this right now if you want to feel good after a movie you want to laugh you want to cry you want to be transformed in some way i would highly suggest watching musical chairs and janet you did an amazing job with the team that you had um and thank you for holding true to the vision and not being swayed in any way because of what corporate America or the or the mainstream media may have been saying. So thank mm -hmm. you for, for your integrity in that. Well, you're quite welcome. And it's like music to my ears. <laughs> yes, yes, there's music everywhere. So um, please, again, um, you can find the film hopefully coming soon to HBO. Um, mm -hmm. And the DVDs will be available for purchase very soon on their website at musicalchairsthefilm.com and join their Facebook, like them. The more, I think the more the people um, come out and and show their support for musical chairs, it will actually be a tipping point for maybe corporate America to see mm -hmm. that this is a film that needs to be recognized as something important. So thank you so much for joining us today. And um, until we meet again, be blessed. Yes.